All right, I'm going to call to order this regular city council meeting for Monday, September 9th, 2019. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Walton, Visser, here. Bellinger, here. Wise, here. Rhines, here. Gilroy, here. Smith, here. I did receive a phone call uh, from Miss Walton. Um, she is unable to be with us this evening um, due to um, she's in the hospital. I'm just gonna say that right now. So please just keep Sandy in your prayers. And um, so I'm looking for a motion. motion to excuse yes. Sandy. All right, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you very much. And uh, now I'm uh, looking for approval of the agenda, unless there's any changes that need to be made. I would like to make a motion to add the uh, 615 North Cedar Run Court water waiver issue as an action item for 8E. D. D. E. D. Yes, correct. Thank I you. Wrote down All right. Thank you. And <clears throat> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, and then a uh, motion to approve the agenda. Okay, yeah. I make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Thank you. Support. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, now we have an opportunity for audience participation. Looks like. Don't have any this evening. I'm looking for approval for council meeting minutes of August 26, 2019. Everybody hopefully had a chance to read through those. Are there any changes that need to be made? A motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Okay, thank you, Noah. Second. All, right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Noah, you had an opportunity to review accounts payable? Yes, I did. Great. Uh, I went through all of them and I had some uh, individual requests and clarifications from the chief on a couple of his. Okay. Um, but after going through everything, I'd like to make a recommendation to pay checks 72216 through 72259 and a total of $470,981.08. Thank you. And there might be a few more questions from council on some other okay. things. So. Any questions on any of the accounts available this evening? No, but I'll start with Okay, all right. Holly? Wise? Yes. Rhines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Bizzard? Yes. Bellinger? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Moving right along, we've got a short action item list. Uh, the first is the MML Liability and Property Pool Insurance Renewal. Rachel? Hi. Hi. Um, this, just that time of year again, um, I met with our representative from Meadowbrook Insurance who um, the MML contracts with for the insurance. Um, you have the figures in front of you. There is a small increase as compared to last year. Um, we are also going to receive dividends upon uh, renewal like we did last year as well as, and I broke down years prior so you mm -hmm. can see kind of what we have gotten back. Yeah. Um, no major changes last year, you might remember. We did change the structure a little bit on the fleet insurance <coughs> where we have a great value on a few of our vehicles versus just um, a value with depreciation. We agree that if that vehicle is totaled, we get this amount. Mm -hmm. um, and so we do pay for that a little bit more on those vehicles. Okay. Um, and we did increase the deductible on the we had a $500 deductible on all of the vehicles and we increased that to 1000 to have some cost savings last year as well. Okay. Any questions for Rachel in this, uh, what she's presented to us? So, so just real quickly, with the um, dividends coming back for the year, really we're only going up, if you could take that 6000 and some of the dollars <coughs> away, we're only about 64908 mm -hmm. So it, it, it went up, but it didn't go up from the uh, to right. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. So with that being said, I'll make a, a motion to approve the Michigan Municipal League Liability and Property Pool Insurance Proposal for the policy term of 10-1-2019 through 9-30-2020 in the amount of $71,000. Second. Second. Any questions? Thank you. 
package from a couple of years ago. Uh, my sense is that we will probably never have one of these situations arise. Um, they are targeting projects that are that have $2 million or more in state or federal funding. I just think that's unlikely here. Um, that said, we have to adopt it. So mm -hmm. following the state's best practices, you have the two resolutions in front of you. We would request that you uh, approve those. Our deadline is actually the end of, or the beginning of next week. So. Okay. Any questions regarding this for like yeah, I, yeah. Well, no? I, yeah. I just have one question. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. It was relating around that two million. Uh, it does I don't see where it states that it is two million fund for it says communities must annually report on projects with two million or more in PV related items, yes. regardless of whether they implemented it or not. So I don't see where grants are tied into that, but we do have projects that could exceed two million. Yeah, so I think they're looking at specifically the paving related items. Um, when we've done projects such as our current project going on that has the underground water, sewer, stormwater, that could push a project up there, but I don't see the paving piece being up so that. So it's just paving only. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess, and it, it sounds like we're not going to be implementing this most of the time, but are we allowed to request, I guess I'm trying to figure out how this would be structured and can we ask for warranties for projects that are under two million? I know John in the past has asked if there was a warranty on the work that was done on uh, Church and Putnam with the, the intersection, the intersection they there. They told us that they were going to warranty it because there was a failure in the material, I believe. I, I guess I'm just wondering, I know there are two million <clears throat> numbers here, but is this implementable for smaller projects, or does it have to reach the two million threshold? What's I, I believe that we can implement pavement warranties beyond the scope of this. Um, I'm not prepared to go into too yeah. much detail on that. Um, you know, I haven't researched what that would look like as far as what it does to cost um, on different projects, but certainly there's been more emphasis on that in the last couple of years. I think that's why we see this coming down from the state today, but I can certainly look into that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for it. All right. Um, Holly, do you want this all as one or two separate? Two separate? Okay, so we're going to need two separate. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution to adopt the local payment warranty program. Thank you, Noah. Second. Thank you. Holly? Gilroy? Yes. Smith? Yes. Visser? Yes. Ballinger? Yes. Wise? Yes. Rines? Yes. Okay. And then I will make a motion to implement a local pavement warranty program. Thank you, Noah. Second. Thank you, Dan. And Holly? Smith? Yes. Visser? Yes. Ballinger? Yes. Wise? Yes. Rines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much. All right, um, our last action item is the 615 North Cedar Run billing dispute. <coughs> Corey, thank you so much for providing this um, to us. This was the gentleman that was here at our last council meeting. He spoke at public comment. Um, we advised him if he was looking for um, his uh, shutoff notice fee to be waived that he would have to submit in writing. Corey did an excellent job following up with him. Um, Corey, if you'd like to go ahead and from this point as far as your interactions and yeah, so, today. Um, yep, so he submitted a request in writing. It came in after the agenda was published, which is why uh, you saw it on the table today. Um, so his letter is pretty self-explanatory. He's asking for a waiver of the reconnect fee of $100. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we're aware, staff does not have the administrative authority to do that. So when we have a request like that, it comes to city council. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Regarding this, any discussion that we want to talk about? I yes, just, Tim, sorry. Go ahead. 
Um, <clears throat> any waiver is completely discretionary in right. this body. So you could grant a waiver in full, or you could grant it in part, or you could deny a waiver. I see that the cost has been reduced to seventy dollars. I think a major component of the argument was uh, a question as to the hundred dollar fee. So one option you would have would be if you wanted to compromise it to the seventy dollar. Okay. Dan, you have a question or comment? I just wanted to commend Corey on his follow up with this. He had um, very quickly followed up with the resident and gave council detailed information on his follow ups and went to, went above and beyond, especially after the uh, the written notice came in after the deadline to make sure he got it to council and we had the uh, the opportunity to put it on the agenda and I think Corey went above and beyond with reaching out to this this resident. Second question. Yes, Jennifer. Directed towards uh, council more. Um, if a motion to deny were uh, brought up, that would squash this issue for the future. If no action is taken, this specific issue could come back. Come back, correct? If someone were to raise it again. Mm -hmm. okay. So, real quick, I just yes. that was late to the last meeting in Harold's comments, but reading the email or er, mm -hmm. email here, this is also the first change since we went to monthly, correct? So he had a previous from the mm -hmm. past two months, and then month of August, is that correct? And he planned on paying on August 28th? Am I understanding that's, this right? That's what he communicated. Okay. Yes. So yeah. when I received my bill, I'll be honest, I did the same thing, but I paid it right when I got it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you The only thing I say <clears throat> to that is um, this was the last two-month bill, mm -hmm. and so the noticing followed our historical practice right. Right. where there was a, your regular bill, right. and then after the due date passed, we sent the delinquent mailer, and then a few days before the shutoff date, we sent the third mailer. Now that process has changed going forward, mm -hmm. but this followed that same process mm -hmm. as it had in the past. Sure. So, yeah. And we actually yes. sent a fourth notice because he got his next month bill with that previous balance on sure. it. I'd like to make a motion to deny the action requested. All right. Second. All right, thank you very much. Do we have any further discussion? Questions? No? Holly, will you call the roll? Smith? Yes. Fizzer? No. Bellinger? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Rines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. All right, thank you very much. That concludes our action items for this evening. We have no discussion items. Uh, we have not received any correspondence, so we're just going to move right along to department head reports. Uh, Corey, yours was. Very thorough. Thank you very much. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I do. So uh, when I published this on Thursday, we had made a note that our paving was scheduled to begin Friday, mm -hmm. which it did. And then I think as you are all aware, we had a gas main interruption. Um, so the gas main disruption was caused by the contractor. They were back there doing their final um, water valve box uh, heights, I guess, to put them to grade. And at the same time that the paving contractor was there, that's when that happened. So starting first thing in the morning, they started on Grand River Avenue. There's about three layers of asphalt that has to go in there. They got the first one done. They were waiting for it to cool. That's when the gas main uh, happened. So okay. for about a two hour period, they had Grand River closed off from Meach to Putnam Street. And the paving contractor had to just stop what they were doing. Um, they were able, they actually had their equipment at that intersection and they weren't even allowed to move it. So um, they were able to mobilize another paving piece of equipment so that they could start on the mill, middle portion of the project. Um, but consumers' work underground to fix the gas main wasn't finished by the time they were ready to do Mullet Street. So if you drive by right now, um, middle has its first layer of asphalt mullet is still gravel and then that lane the further for the southern lane on grand river is still closed <coughs> with just the single layer of asphalt um, as council is aware we had two major issues on this project one was uh, frontier not completing its work in time so that delayed our concrete work when that finished um, reith riley the supplier of the asphalt went on strike at like the end of july um, and so that pushed things back quite a bit um, 
right now our understanding is that the paving contractors are under the gun trying to finish a lot of the work that backed up in the last couple weeks. Um, and so I can't tell you when they're going to be back. Uh, I have heard from one resident who I think is in the audience tonight, Ms. Campbell. I wasn't uh, sure if you would recognize Yeah, him. I remember you um, <laughs> about some of the frustrations with the project. And, uh, you know, certainly I think they're well-founded frustrations. So um, I'd like to be able to sit here and say they'll be here this week. I, I can't tell you that right now. Um, I know that the process will be uh, they will do the base course on mullet, and then they'll come back and do the whole road. And so we're looking at about two days for the major work, and then they would have their final restoration type work to finish. Um, so it's been a, been a process. Uh, certainly appreciate the patience of the residents, and uh, happy to answer any questions. Okay. Sure, look nice. <laughs> <laughs> any questions for uh, city manager from his so report? Was the, it was the paving equipment that caused the gas? No, it leak. was um, it was the contractor. They were digging near okay. a water valve. <clears throat> And uh, oh, that wasn't the first time that's happened. So uh, our understanding is that they will likely have to pay for that work through consumers. Mm -hmm. um, we will also likely send a bill for our time that was incurred because we had to help with shutting down some of the streets. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was a major... It was a major... major, major that could have been even worse with hot asphalt. And yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was not good. Yeah. We're, we're fortunate that there was no injuries, <clears throat> no major issues. Mm -hmm. um, I think you guys handled it very, yeah. very good, yeah. as quickly as you did. So, appreciate that. All right, well, if nobody's got any questions for Corey, we'll just move right along. Chief, how are you? I'm doing good. Good. I do have a report. Fantastic. I have Let's two hear things. It. I think you're aware of both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, this Wednesday, 6 30, we have the 9 11 memorial service down at Nisa. So, I want everybody to be aware of that. And then uh, the second thing is the memorial service for former Chief Jim LeClaire is this Sunday at the Eagles at 1 o'clock. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right. Um, Mr. Moving right along then, uh, subcommittee uh, reports <coughs> from any of your board meetings. Anybody want to share anything? All right. We'll just keep moving right along. Now we do have an opportunity for <coughs> audience participation. Um, if anybody would like to come forward and share anything with us, if you'd like to. Well, what I will share with you at this time. <laughs> yes. Can you just state your name real oh. quick for us? I mean, I know Corey did, but because we have our videographer here, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Terry Campbell. Um, I have been going door to door mm -hmm. asking for punch list items. Okay. And I think they're going to be quite surprised at a couple things that they totally have missed. Okay. All right. And the other thing is, and I'm going to say this as politely as I can, okay. which is probably better than when I talk to Corey on the phone. This city needs to be an advocate. If this is such a small job, they can just eat the money and have them work Saturday or Sunday and schedule this in, have it be done. The other thing is <clears throat> communications between the contractor, Spicer, and Scott DeVries seem to be not an A+. Plus. There was no letter when the paving was going to start. Fortunately, one of the member, one of the residents was t talking to one of the neighbors or she would have been trapped within her driveway, not able to go to work. Even though my understanding is Scott indicated to her that there would be a letter the night before put in everybody's door when the paving was to start. I'm also concerned that the school is being apprised of the road open and close, open and close, open and close. Because the kids don't know where to get on the bus. Well, I appreciate you 
coming, Terry, and, and actually, um, Corey, he and I had a conversation uh, before the meeting this evening. He just kind of brought me up to speed on it and said you might be here. And I appreciate the fact that you're here and because, um, you know, you're living through it. And so we appreciate your feedback. And I know you're working with, you know, you've been chatting with Corey and, and, and giving him updates and everything. So I appreciate that. And I have decided that because Corey is not necessarily the point man, although him and the city are going to take the heat for this, that he wouldn't be as up-to-date as Scott would be or should be. And I know he hasn't always been apprised of mishaps that the contractor has done. And as I indicated to Corey, some of these things are unforeseeable, especially once you start digging the ground and the pipes aren't where they were on the maps, et cetera, et cetera. But I would say two-thirds of the problems have been self-inflicted by the contractor. Well, we appreciate you coming here this evening and sharing it with us because, again, you're living through it, and, um, and we're um, not there every single day, obviously, like you are as a resident or your neighbors. And so I really appreciate the fact that you reached out to, to Corey and, and shared all of this with him. Um, Corey, were you going to discuss with Scott what was going on Saturday morning with the digging? Yeah, and like I told you, I, I'm not going to have that answer tonight, um, I, but I will. I get, get back that, to yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. We yes. really do. And, and I'm sure Corey will be... You know, following up with you, and then, then he'll keep us. Well, hey, he called me back today, so yeah. that's a big point in his favor. Well, good, good. We like to hear that. We definitely do. We appreciate that. Um, all right, uh, moving along then. Um, council member comments. I'm going to start down here with Dan. No comments. Gene. Uh, no comments. John. Happy birthday, Council Member Smith. I'll say it publicly. Uh -huh. uh, and that's all I have. <laughs> all right. Noah. Ditto. Yes. Appreciate it. All right, nothing, thank you. All right, and happy birthday. And, uh, you know, it's just a nice evening out there. We're, we're done a little early, so I think that's just going to be it for me as well. So we're going to go ahead and adjourn this meeting.